folks, Ola here. I'm getting ready to string a spinning reel and I just thought I'd give you a couple of my uh, tips that I use when I string. I use the Pissifun line spooler and it works for bait casters and spinning reels. What it does is it allows this head to move while you're reeling it in so you never get line twists. Okay, it's a great tool. I've had it for, I think, a couple of years, and I use it every single time. It beats holding a pencil between my toes with the spool on it, trying to keep pressure. And then some people recommend that you have a wet paper towel to run your line as it's spooling. I don't use water. I use this. It is KVD Line and Lure Conditioner, and I'll spray this on my spools the night before I fish too. Not every time, but you know, when I feel like I'm getting a lot of line twists or whatever. This is really for monofilament, but it does work for braid too. It kind of calms the, the twist down in the braid, so it lays a little flatter and casts a little smoother and further. So in place of water, I'm going to spray this as I go. So today I'm using Power Pro Super 8 Slick V2. And it's 15 pound braid. That's what I typically put on my spinning reels. These are not typical finesse. I use them for, I'd say, power finesse, if anything. Heavy duty finesse. So I'm going to tie an arbor knot onto this spool and probably put a tiny piece of tape to hold that in place. And then I will start spooling it now. See how that twists? And it puts tension on it. So it's a beautiful thing, guys. I will not have any line twists from the stringing. Okay, I'm gonna see I've got some on my spool there. I'm gonna go ahead and spray a little bit of conditioner. This stuff doesn't hurt your reel either if you have overspray. It actually will clean it. Okay, and then I'm gonna put the whole spool will be braid. I'm not gonna have any backing. I just don't like to mess with math. I'm lazy. I don't like to figure out how much and then try to guess. Mm -mm. Just spool it all the way up. And you want to make sure that your line is going on evenly. You don't want like a big clump of line here and you don't want it stopping short before it hits the spool edge. I've had that happen too. Just out of the blue they started doing it. So the reels come with some spacers you can install under the spool if that starts happening which I did and it's been fine since. A little bit more line. Yeah, it's looking good. It's looking nice and even. A little more spray. In the long run, this spray will help it lay nice and flat under there. Don't ever get that far down on the spool, obviously, but nice to have it just nice flat tight so if you want to invest in one of these I'll have the link in this video but man this thing is I've been using it for like I said a couple of years you can really rip through the spooling too like I said it, it has a lot of tension on it so it's nice and tight and I should be able to fit pretty much this whole spool maybe a little less you don't want to over spool these because then you'll have the line that comes off too far and you'll start getting knots way far down in there and it's a mess. I'm going to spool it right to that outer indicator. I think that's about good. I don't know if you can see that. How close I am to the edge. Just a little bit of a line visible. Anyway, this should last a while. Next year, maybe sometime I'll re spool. And then I keep notes on when I spooled each of my reels because I'll forget. I mean, you have five reels or six or seven or whatever. So I keep a little spreadsheet and I'm going to update it right now. It tells when I did my drag. I think I'll do the drag on this today too. So then I can loosen this little clamp pull out my line 
cut it and this is done. We're done with this little tool till the next reel gets spooled. So we'll take the spool off. Take it all the way off. Yeah, this is stock washers. Ooh, they're kind of smoked. Dang, I'm glad I took this off and looked. I'm going to go ahead and clean my real body too. I mean, there's no need, reason not to, right? I have some real... This is for the reel itself. We're going to clean the inside. And this is the grease for the washers. And I need a little screwdriver to get out the... drag washers and I'm going to keep them in order because there are there are three washers and three spacers and they go in a certain order you don't want to mess them up you can always look it up if you do but there is a particular order and I do have extra washers in there okay here's the little spring that holds them in like I said they're going to stay in order I usually just do that and the whole stack comes out and you can see all the old probably not so they go like this in this order there's this that and you got your I'll show you an actual washer if it's not completely disintegrated here it is it's just made of felt and this looks okay I can put more grease on that and reinstall it. So that's the top washer. And then we've got a spacer. And another felt washer. And these felt washers are the things that are different part numbers. The very bottom one is the thickest. And you've got that sucker, and then the last washer, that's the thickest one. So I'm going to clean all these up, re-grease them, put them back in in the same order, and we'll have like a new reel almost. So let's start by cleaning this gunk out of this spool. Spray some cleaner in it. You can use cotton swabs, paper towels, cloths, rags, whatever you have. Yeah, it's full of grease. At least they're greased. They're not coming apart. I thought they were smoked, but they're not. They're still in great condition, so I get to reuse them. I think if you have to replace them, the stock ones were like $10 for a set. And you can put aftermarket carbon washers in, but I prefer the felt. I have carbon in my other Stratic. And i got to say, I like the felt washers. They just feel smoother. Carbon washers, it's like, you, you, you can't, there's no fine adjustment. It's either super tight or really loose. And it's a very fine line between the two. Okay. That's pretty clean. So first washer I'm going to add some more grease it's not too bad actually but I'm going to grease it down you don't want a big huge blob of it but actually let me wash the rest of the washers but you do want it completely covered because those things really get hot when their fish are pulling the drag they get a workout get exercised all right everything's clean now i'm going to add some grease and some real butter this is my bottom washer and i just kind of put a blob of it on there and then i work it between my finger and thumb and just spin the washer and make sure it's completely covered in a nice coat Okay, then once I have that, I go ahead and stick it in my reel, in my spool rather. And this is the bottom one, this is the biggest of the washers, and it'll stick right to the bottom. And I've got a spacer, 
go ahead and put a little grease on it. I'm going to put that right on top of the space, the washer. And I'm going to grease my next washer in the stack. Real maintenance is not hard, not on a spinning reel. It's a little more of a pain in the butt on bait casters, and I've never done a bait caster. I'll probably send mine in to get done, but the spinning reels, they're easy. And every reel is different, so you might have two drag washers, you might have one, you might have four, I have three. This spacer here is indexed. You see it's got two little ears and your reel, your spool has the little indexers inside. So make sure when you install that middle spacer, you get those indexed correctly. It won't go in if it's not. And down to my third and last washer. nice good coat. They were feeling a little dry. I'm glad I took them apart. It's a nice good coat on that. I always use a little screwdriver to gently push that washer in place. You don't want to have any folds in it or have it cocked. It has to be exactly smooth. Then you have this last spacer that has like a little cap on the top. Make sure you put it in correctly. Do not put it in with the cap on the bottom. That little rounded cap goes on top on your Stratix. If you put it in upside down, your drag won't work. It won't grab the little cap part on top. And it's slotted so the washer beneath it will fit into it like this. Like a little castellated top on it. So it, once it fits, it locks all those drag washers in place. Simple, simple. And then you have your little retention spring, which you don't need to grease that. Just pop it right back in. That's your screwdriver. Boom. Five minutes, I've got new, new line and freshly greased drag washers. It's going to feel like a new reel. And then look at your spool too. You might want to clean it up a little bit. The, the adjustment, your drag adjustments deal. Whatever this little thing's called. Drag adjustment knob. Love those clicks. Okay, can you see in there? clean and secured. Let's clean off the, the body of the reel. You got some gears here. I don't get too in depth with it. If it was really filthy or had been dunked in the lake, I would say a brush and some cleaner, but I'm just gonna spray everything with the reel clean and then wipe it down. It's never been dunked, so it shouldn't be too god awfully dirty, and it's not. Not at all. It's pretty clean. Just little plastic gears and you could probably further take this apart and service it, but I don't think it's necessary. Wipe down the rest of the body. And put my spool back on. It's also keyed. This little spindle is keyed to this. Your drag washers and or your spacers and your spool. So it can only fit in one way. And you'll know if it's not in, it won't go on. Put your drag adjustment knob back on, which is also keyed. See, it's kind of slotted. Tighten it down. I'm going to tie a leader on there and it'll be ready to go tomorrow. So there you have it. Reel is just like new again and I am ready to go out and catch that double digit now.
Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. See you in the next video.